Hi, I'm Professor Baldwin, and today I'm going to teach you how to solve quadratic equations using the square root property. The square root property tells us that if k is a real number, the solutions to the equation x squared equals k are going to be equal to x equals the square root of k or x equals negative the square root of k. So we could have a positive or a negative. Or more concisely, we use this notation, x equals plus or minus the square root of k. In the next example, we're going to solve the equations by applying the square root property. So we take the square root of each side. So in example one, we take the square root of the left side and the square root of the right side. On the left, because you're taking the square root of something that's squared, you're left with q plus 3, the base, and it's equal to plus or minus the square root of 4. Now we can simplify the square root of 4. So we have q plus 3 equals plus or minus 2. We need to solve for q, so let's subtract 3 from both sides. That gives us q equals negative 3 plus or minus 2. The plus or minus is telling us that we have two possibilities. We have q equals negative 3 plus 2, and we have q equals negative 3 minus 2. Negative 3 plus 2 equals negative 1, and negative 3 minus 2 equals negative 5. So the solution here is negative 1 or negative 5. Let's look at example 2. h minus 4 squared equals negative 8. Take the square root of both sides. The left side, we're left with h minus 4. And on the right, we have plus or minus the square root of negative 8. Well, remember that the square root of negative 8 is equal to the square root of negative 1 times 4 times 2. We can take the square root of the negative 1, that's i. We can take the square root of the 4, that's 2, and we're left with the square root of 2. So this simplifies to h minus 4 equals plus or minus 2i square root of 2. We're solving for h, so we're going to add 4 to both sides in order to isolate h. So h is equal to 4 plus or minus 2i square root of 2. Now notice how the solution to number 2 is very different from the solution to number 1. In number one, our solutions were both real numbers. In problem two, our solutions are complex. There's a real number component and there's an imaginary number component. So we'll leave this in that concise four plus or minus two i square root of two format. And we just put it in a solution set. Now along with using the square root property comes completing the square. When you use completing the square, you're taking a, a trinomial that you can't factor and you're turning it into a perfect square trinomial. These right here. And there are four steps that we're going to follow in order to complete the square. The most important step is step number one, and that is to make sure that a, your leading coefficient, is one. It has to be one in order for you to complete the square. So look at our first example, and our leading coefficient is one. So the next step is to isolate your variable terms. In other words, you're taking your constant, which is 15 here, and you're moving it to the other side. So we're going to subtract 15 from both sides. That gives us t squared plus 8t equals negative 15. Step three is the actual process of completing the square. 
So we're going to rewrite that left hand side so that it looks like a perfect square trinomial. And the way you do that is you take that um, linear coefficient, so the 8, so the b value of your ax squared plus bx, so here it's 8, you divide it by 2, and then you square it. And I'm going to encourage you to write out each step, and you'll see why here shortly. 8 divided by 2 is 4, and then we square that, and that is equal to 16. 16 is the value we need to add to both sides in order to complete the square. And remember, we have to add it to both sides in order to keep this as an equation, right? If we add 16 to the left and we don't add it to the right, we changed that equation to no longer stay consistent to what it was. We have to do the same thing to both sides. Now, simplify the right-hand side. The left will leave it as it is and the right simplifies down to 1. Now we care about the left hand side. We rewrote this so that it would be a perfect square trinomial. So if you don't trust me, factor this out and you'll see that this is a perfect square trinomial. It's t plus something squared and it's equal to 1. Now this something is always the value that you had from completing the square before you squared it. So here it's a positive 4, so our factor, it's a positive 4. That's why I encourage you to write out all of the steps. Now you can apply that square root property. You have t plus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of 1. And the square root of 1 is just 1, so we have t plus 4 equals plus or minus 1. Isolate t by subtracting 4 from both sides, and we have t equals negative 4 plus or minus 1. Remember that this gives us two solutions, negative 4 plus 1 and negative 4 minus 1. Let's keep the t equals. This first, negative 4 plus 1, tells us that t equals negative 3, and the second, negative 4 minus 1, t equals negative 5. So our solutions here are negative 3 and negative 5. See, completing the square isn't that bad. Let's do another example. Remember step 1. Make sure your leading coefficient is 1. And our leading coefficient is 1. Step 2. Move your constant term to the other side. So we need to subtract 6 from both sides. That gives us p squared plus 4p equals negative 6. Now we have to complete the square. So we take the value of our b, which is 4, we divide it by 2, and then we square it. 4 divided by 2 is 2 and then it gets squared, and then that's 4. So we're adding 4 to both sides to complete the square. p squared plus 4p plus 4 equals negative 6 plus 4. So the left-hand side, you know, is a perfect square trinomial. It's p, and then remember what that second term is? It's whatever we had right before we squared. So it's a plus 2. And then we simplify the right-hand side. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. Now we can use the square root property. And we have p plus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of negative 2. Well, let's simplify that square root of negative 2 first. And that's plus or minus i square root of 2. Right, we took the square root of that negative 1 and got the i. Isolating p, we need to subtract 2 from both sides. So here we have p equals negative 2 plus or minus i square root of 2. Remember, you need to have that real number component first and the imaginary component 
second. And let's put that as a solution set, negative two plus or minus i square root of two. Okay, you're doing great, so it's time for one that does not have a leading coefficient of one. In example three, we do not have a leading coefficient of one, so we need to make it a leading coefficient of one. So how do you do that? You divide by whatever that leading coefficient is. It's two, so we divide by two. I don't know why it's trying to give me a three. Divide by two. You have to divide every term by two. And then we simplify. Our first term becomes a squared. Our second term, 4a divided by 2, becomes 2a. And our third, our constant, is 5 halves, and it's equal to 0. Step 2, isolate our variables. So let's move this 5 halves to the other side by subtracting it. So we have a squared plus 2a equals negative 5 halves. Step three, complete the square. Take the value of b, which is two, divide it by two, and then square it. Two divided by two is one. And you square that and you get one. So we're adding one to both sides to complete our square. a squared plus two a plus one equals negative five halves plus one. The left-hand side, we have a perfect square trinomial. Our first term is a. Remember, your second term is whatever you had before you squared it when you were doing the, completing the square, which here is plus one. Now the right-hand side, we wanna simplify this. So negative five halves plus one, which is two over two, that becomes negative three halves. So we have a plus one squared equals negative three halves. Now let's use the square root property and we'll have a plus one equals plus or minus the square root of negative three halves. We have this negative, so let's take the square root of the negative, which gives us the imaginary number i and we have the square root of 3 halves. Isolate a by subtracting 1. We have a equals negative 1 plus or minus i times the square root of 3 halves. Well, let's use the quotient property here because notice we technically have a square root in the denominator. So we have the square root of 3 over the square root of 2. Remember, you can't have a square root in the denominator, so we need to rationalize the denominator. And to do that, we multiply by the square root of two over the square root of two. The negative one remains, plus or minus stays, and we have i. Our numerator is now the square root of three times the square root of two, which is the square root of six. And our denominator, Square root of 2 times square root of 2 becomes 2. So our solution here is negative 1 plus or minus i square root of 6 over 2. Or you may see it as negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 6 over 2 i. And you put that as a solution set. I hope you feel more confident with your completing the square now. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful. And if so, I hope that you will go check out some of my other math videos.